Hi, welcome to Mechnician. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you the gel test diagnostic device and its capabilities on the Cummins ISX15. So you can see here right now I'm already inside the gel test system. Uh, you can see some of the brands in that on the uh, on highway component side that there's access to. Uh, in this case, uh, we're just going to go to Cummins and we're going to come in here and look for the IS series, the ISX. All right, and then you can see we've got some uh, some different systems here we can choose from. Uh, we got the uh, we're looking specifically here for the 15. Uh, I've got uh, looks like a 2350, 2250. Uh, let's just go into 2350 here. Okay, so and here it's going to show you the different ways that you can actually connect to this. In this case, you can see it's a standard. Uh, nine pin connection that comes with your gel test diagnostic device. Uh, you can see some of the other ways that you can actually connect here, uh, the OBD connection, but let's, uh, let's take a look at the nine pin here and let's just connect. Depends obviously where, what, uh, where the components installed. All right. So now we're inside, uh, you can see there's all kinds of capabilities here, uh, you know, absolutely, uh, uh, complete coverage on this model. So here on the left hand side, we've got a few different um, items in the menu. We've got kind of these uh, first four here, or the sorry, the first five are really part of uh, the gel test um, diagnostic system. Uh, the bottom here, these bottom four are really part of gel test info. Uh, this is uh, where you get things such as like your troubleshooting by symptoms, uh, different releases, procedures, component replacements. So this is your service instructions and repair times. Uh, this is a separate license, uh, comes included in the first year with gel test, uh, but you also don't normally find this uh, type of data with other systems. Uh, so it's normally a separate separate uh, piece of information you have to acquire. So let's start first on the uh, diagnostic menu and let's take a look at what's in here. So obviously we can come in and, and have a look and read the fault codes. Uh, it's kind of the basics of any diagnostic tool. Uh, pretty simple. You come in here, it's going to you know read those codes that are in the memory. Uh, these case, these are just demo data. So you know let's have a look at this one here. You can see there's information on it in terms of when it happened. Then this is going to give me details on the components, and this is actually how to troubleshoot and fix it. So if I come in here, quickly going to show me the last occurrence. Um, you know, when did it actually occur, the hour. Uh, give me some help with this actual component. You know, if I want to see the engine management control unit, the catalytic reduction, after treatment fuel injector. I mean, you know, tell me about this component. You know, it's going to show you specifically, you know, in this case, like where is it on the engine? Um, you know, give me some, some details on it. Uh, what's the pinout, you know, the resistance, um, you know, give me some measurements on it. You can, you know, go straight in it. We'll get into measurements here in, in a little bit. So, but everything is really connected. The system itself, the gel test system, it's, it is incredible. Um, the majority of, of our customers actually don't even go through an orientation, uh, because it's just so user friendly. If you have any sort of uh, experience working with diagnostic tools, uh, I'm sure you'll be going to be very impressed here. Then you can come in and just get into the fall code troubleshooting. Uh, in this case, it's going to take us through how to actually troubleshoot this specific issue. Um, so you can see we've got the steps laid out for us. So you know, first of all, telling us, you know, check whether the faults are memory, the control unit, and then take these following steps, right? So, you know, and add information, whatever, right? So there's a troubleshooting guide on this catalytic reduction temperature module, abnormal update rate. Um, so it's making sure that you're kind of, you know, these faults here are not there and you've got to clear these ones first, right? So those ones aren't there. Now we're going into step two. So now we're going to check the uh, def tank. And so, you know, it's making sure you don't have any potential leaks. Uh, have a look at the fuel system, you know, mechanical failures, you know, and if there is, here's some manual processes to actually take you through actually repairing that, right? Step five, the after treatment fuel injector, you know, it's taking it down and, it's, and it wants us, what's it want? Check 
just have a look at it. So it's showing you specifically where it is on the engine. Um, here's the component itself. Uh, there's the pinout. Here's the procedure if you need to replace it. Uh, you know, you want to have a look and let's maybe now go into the measurements on this fuel injector. See, it's open, closed. What's its current state, right? Perform the following actions. So let's do a leakage test. It's actually going to walk us through, show us actually how to do a fuel leakage test on the system. Um, you can see all the instructions are there. Now when it's ready, it's telling you to kind of, it's got the engine running, show you where we are, the initial conditions. Um, there's a delay time. There we go. So obviously this is just a demo. So, you know, it's actually doing a fuel leakage test here and giving us the details on what actually occurred. Um, anyway, so you can get the point. You basically, it'll take you through all the steps and as you kind of complete each step, you can check them off to kind of make sure you're, you're finalizing each piece of the procedure. And then at the end, obviously you're coming in. Once you've kind of cleared the, the issue, you're then clearing the faults in the system and the code is then gone. So, so anyways, uh, this process is also, um, we did a manual sort of diagnostic here. But on, on highway vehicles, it's a full automated scan of the all systems inside the vehicle. Uh, we're specifically just here into the Cummins engine just having a look. Uh, but when you actually plug into a truck and you go and hit scan, it's going to read everything and give you the full fault code. So uh, now let's get into some technical data. Actually... Let's come back here first to the diagnostic menu. All right, so we were able to diagnostic menu, we're able to read the fault codes, clear the codes. Uh, you can come in here under system data, you can get your ECU data, um, operation data. You know, you want the record, you want the engine operation data, you want abuse data, aftermarket data record, whatever it is that you're trying to get your hands on. Uh, it's going to provide you all that different data on your engine. Uh, everything's accessible all inside of the one system and, and very simple to get to. So, you know, you can see basically what it's been running at. Um, you know, after treatment data record, efficiency data, uh, everything's all inside. So let's go back here to the menu. So now, um, oops. Right, you've got all the different monitoring you want to do. So if I want to do some uh, live data on the, the engine itself, in this case, we're looking at. This is a demo system, so apologize. Sometimes it's got to read a little bit more. All right, so you can set up triggers. So if you want to know exactly when you're hitting different uh, stages, uh, so if you're doing kind of like a live test, uh, you can record the data as well as add triggers to when things have, have happened. Uh, you can see here just on this engine the, the amount of measurements you can actually read from. It's, uh, it's pretty ridiculous, right? So... You know really anything and everything and that's where you kind of want to you know grab a piece at a time but all the the data i mean whether the buttons are pressed or what's actually active the temperatures uh pressures depending on the vehicle themselves uh and or the engine or the component will be what you'll be able to measure but jaw test uh on our system will be able to do it produce it to you in a readable you know, nice fashion for you to be able to work with if you're trying to kind of monitor during a live test and also record the data in the background for you for up to 30 minutes, you can, you can record data. So there's an idea of kind of how the measurements uh, systems work. You can set up triggers, as I mentioned, and everything's kind of all there for you. 
Uh, now, if we want to kind of do things like actuating components, um, you know, the solenoid valve, intake air heater, fan activation, uh, you know, again, it's going to, if you're connected, it's going to do these things in real time. It's telling us engines that got to be at idle, uh, giving us uh, the different speed, uh, select the activation time, right? So whatever, you know, I want low limit. And there's the valve, value desired signal, right? So you can see it. it's basically just doing controlled test here. Now the fan tells us to wait till it's finished. In this case, we're just going to end it because it is just a demo. So all these sort of functions are basically um, going to do the same. It's going to walk you through every step of the way. So if you're doing cylinder cutout tests, cylinder performance, engine speed, VGT actuator, um, exhaust gas back pressure, you know, looking at your um, your def, uh, the def pump, the leakage, the after treatment. You know, all these are all different tests and things you'd be able to do on this specific uh, ISX 15. Uh, and you can get into things like parameters, uh, you know, the memory, display the parameters, vehicle speed signal, maximum vehicle speed. Um, you know, it's going to depend on the vehicle you're actually working with again, uh, what you're actually able to do some of the functions you can set up an expert mode so not all of your technicians can go in and make adjustments that can impact you know the back end of the vehicle let's say that could change performance or have safety issues um, for example running a you know dpf regen or changing the acceleration speed uh, these are all things that you know you may want to have specific uh, lead hands or or people running so uh, here you can set that for the maximum acceleration and it's going to save that inside of our vehicle. It's going to tell you now, you know, turn the key, the lock position, keep it there for 70 seconds and even gives you a little timer here. So, you know, you can, you know, you're kind of making sure you're giving it the time it needs. Turn the on position and press valid. So all those tasks that I'm showing you are all things you can do on the, uh, Oh, I just need to get me back to the menu. It's still trying to run a test here for me. What did I do? I think the demo's got me spinning in circles. There we go. Um, you know, anyways, all these are different, in this case, parameters that you can set inside of the, the engine and vehicle and you know, whatever is accessible, pretty much uh, you're able to get at. So on the maintenance side, you know, running a regeneration, you know, it's as simple as all the, the other processes. Everything's very user friendly, tells you exactly what you got to do. It's going to take 40 to 240 minutes temperature. You know, here's all the things that are going to happen. And then it's going to actually take you through running that process. So, you know, here's where we want to be, have it at idle. You know, low idle speed, gift, gear shift in the neutral position. And then it's, oops, I actually canceled it. That's okay. Um, it's just a demonstration. Anyways, just running through. At the end, it's going to give you a chart of all the different, you know, temperatures and everything that was accumulated and everything that was kind of worked on uh, during the, the test and save it as in your records. Um, all these are different tests and that that you're able to, to run on the maintenance side. Um, it's pretty impressive and complete as you can see. So calibration, you know, you can get in here. It looks like the turbocharger calibration. It's the same thing. Going to walk you through every step along the way. Configuration, your passwords and that, if you're wanting to manage some of that and then your data recorder. So, I mean, all we've done here is just kind of go through the functionalities beyond just actually even scanning. We covered that really quick to look for your fault codes, but as you can see, there's a, pro, a, a pile of, uh, you know, technical um, activities you can perform with the gel test system on the Cummins uh, ISX-15. Technical data, you know, if you want to see anything from your tightening torques to, you know, tell me about the, uh, the fuel system specs, cooling system, what are the different uh, basic specs and information available. So, I mean, it's got some basic uh, technical data there for you. 
And then we can get into the an actual wiring diagram, uh, fuel system di operating diagram, the DAF diagram, uh, whichever you want to see. I'll just show you an example of what the wiring diagrams are like. Very user friendly again. They all have that ability to kind of click through, get to you know more images, pictures, details on every component, uh, get into measurements, get into everything you're kind of looking for. So first, you can see it's going to itemize everything here. Whoops, going to itemize everything on the uh, that's on the diagram here on the left hand side for you. So if I was trying to find something you know quickly, I could just click on it, and it's going to take me to what that is and where exactly it is in the diagram. And then, you know, if there's further information on that component, it's going to bring that up. So here in this case, I've got the external temperature sensor. I double click on that. It's taking me right into it. So, you know, if I want to see the, the measurements on it, a uh, specific system or a live data selection, you know, it's going to take me right into that right from the, the diagram. So the wiring diagram is very, very you know, beneficial in that sense. People like them. They're accessible. These items here at the top, these top four are available when you're offline. These bottom components all require a, a web connection. There's just so much data. Um, most cases, uh, you're in a shop on on highway and you've got access. So get into maintenance data. Uh, let's take, uh, I don't know, we're doing the 15, right? So let's go into the 15, the maintenance data. Uh, so here you can see it's just got a complete service. Uh, it's giving you, you know, what you've got to actually do during those intervals. Um, you know, what is it you've got to work on for the different, um, different intervals on the engine, right? Or different engines on the cooling system and whatever you've got to actually do in the maintenance. So that's just all there to help you know specifically the maintenance uh, work that's got to be completed. Uh, technical data. Same thing, we've got to go in and actually specify the, the exact engine. You can see we've got so many that we could be working on here. Um, on the 15, you can see we've got lots of options. I'm just going to hit the 450. Could hit anyone there, but just trying to take you and show you an example. Okay, so here now we're getting into you know, some more specific te technical data. Uh, obviously the uh, engine plate, uh, some of the generic uh, engine distribution, you know, phasing, the belts diagram, uh, fuel system and the components, you know, the injection system, firing orders, pressures, you know, oversupplies, um, turbochargers, sorry. All right, so there's uh, some of the lube details you know, the cooling system, adjustments and tolerances, liquid capacities, uh, the after treatment system. So, you know, some quick, you know, sort of technical data to give you more details on, on the engine itself. Uh, then you can get into actual troubleshooting by symptoms. Again, these bottom four components, this is part of gel test info. Uh, most systems wouldn't have anything like this to, to offer you. Um, so here you can get into all the different types of symptoms that maybe aren't producing a fault code, you know, knocking and misfires, uh, valves worn, vibration, high engine gas, temp high exhaust gas temperatures, you know, loss engine power, whatever it might be. I mean, and just take one of these and it's going to be similar to the uh, clearing a fault code process. So it's going to take you through, you know, make sure there's no faults, clear them, you know, and it's going to, you know, walk you through all the different steps, uh, you know, any leaks downstream, you know, whatever it might be. So whatever the process is for that symptom that you've identified, it's going to take you through it and then get to the end. Um, releases and procedures. Here we've got uh, piles of different uh, procedures for, you know, anything from, um, you know, acceleration tests, to checking the injectors, um, checking air shutoff valves, I mean, leak test. Uh, all kinds of things uh, to take you through the steps to be able to, to perform service on the engine and, and diagnose issues. So component replacement guides. <clears throat> so here you've got all the different um, modules. You can see on the left-hand side how many... Uh, 
component replacement guides there is like it's quite extensive um you know let's just click on anything here the oil pressure sensor right connect the tool right verify location right obviously so here's our oil sensor showing us specifically uh, what it is disconnect the wiring harness remove i mean this one's obviously a very uh, simple one to actually do but you know in many cases that's not the case so uh, but your steps and directions and having nice uh, visuals and that to actually make it easy to find what you're working on is uh, makes things very simple. Uh, repair times. And come in if you're worried about time, um, time to repair. I mean, it's going to give you an idea of what the different times for the tasks are. And you can just quickly search up top um, for whatever it might be, right? So in this case, you know, piston replacement, 37.2 hours, right? And then if I... Here it is here, right? First one, 34, all of them, right? So the first bit, yeah. Um, oops, sorry. And you can even leave notes. These little comments are notes you can leave um, also to be shared on the different stuff. So there you go. There's a really quick walkthrough to give you some sense. I mean, obviously we need hours and hours and hours to get into the depths, uh, even just on one engine. Uh, you know, if we come back out though, and I show you now after we complete this, um, we'll disconnect from the system. All right. And then now here I'm going to come back out. And I'm going to show you also while we were doing all that, it was also recording a diagnostic report for you. Uh, it saves all that in the garage resource planner. So, I mean, you want to save vehicles, you want to save work orders, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, in this case, I mean, you can see that everything we were doing, it was capturing. I mean, the active faults, uh, some of the tests and that we did. Remember, we quickly pulled up the engine abuse data. Um, some of the monitoring, when we went through and we had all the different settings, it's recorded all that. Some of the tests, clearing our DPF, the reports. I mean, we showed you all that as we were going through Um you know, work we did. And then there you go. There's a, just like that. It recorded everything that you were performing, uh, without even having to document a thing. So, so pretty nice. Uh, that's all kept in the garage resource planner. Um, I'm just going to exit and I'll just quickly show you if you went into whatever it is, I want to go into a heavy duty truck. Um, Oh, sorry, I'm still in manual. Let's go to auto. I want to go into heavy duty. <clears throat> just show you when you actually click on a, when you plug into a truck, it goes in immediately and just detects all the systems. And right away gives you a report on everything going on inside of that vehicle. In this case, it's a Freightliner, uh, Cascadia 116. Uh, you can see we've got a Detroit diesel engine. Uh, it's gone in, it's scanning every system inside of there, the transmission, the uh, the brakes, uh, everything that is involved. Um, this will just take a minute, but gives you an idea of basically what uh, what's going on here inside the when you do an automatic uh, diagnostic. And then the same would occur <clears throat> as I showed you before. You know, you either have the information. Some of them you have the troubleshooting steps and everything alongside it. Uh, details on components uh, depends exactly what you're working on, what it is. Uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. So here you can see the Detroit engine, you know, the temp sensor, I mean, takes us all through everything. So anyways, uh, thank you very much for joining me here today with a demo of the Cummins uh, ISX-15 uh, from Jaw Test. Uh, if you need more details or looking to get your own diagnostic tool, uh, check out mechnician.com where we've got complete systems to help empower your service. Thank you.